Hello everyone, I'm Bingjo. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys upper bounce and lower bounce. All right, only upper bounce and lower bounce because this is a little bit of a long sub chapter. So I don't want to make this video too long. So yeah. So I'll be talking about upper bounce and lower bounce. All right. So this is a little bit important. So you must make sure that you actually understand how it works and how you need to solve questions like that. So without further ado, let's go. Um, I'm going to denote upper bound as UB and lower bound as LB for, you know, faster purposes. All right. So first thing first, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. If I'm to ask you, uh, if I'm to tell you, all right, this pen is 15 cm. Okay. But that is just an estimate. All right. For actual one, this pen might be 15.6. So if I, I was to say that this pen is 15 cm and this is corrected or estimated to 1 cm. All right, so I cannot, obviously, I can't just say what is the actual length of this pen by just looking at it. So I'm just going to say this pen is 15 cm and maybe the error is 1 cm. So this estimated means the error. All right. And to look for the upper bound and lower bound of an object, we divide the error by 2. Okay. So the error here is 1 cm. So we will divide this by 2 and this will give to 0 0.5 cm. So if my pen, if the length of my pen is 15 cm, the lower bound will be 14.5 and the upper bound will be 15.5. All right. So this will be the lower bound of the length of my pen and this will be the upper bound and this will be the estimated length of the pen. So this is a, a brief a brief explanation of what is upper bound and lower bound and how do you find the upper bound and lower bound of an object according to the error given in the question. So uh, with this, I am going to move on to a, a few stuff that you will need to know for upper bound and lower bounds, which is the plus, the multiplication, the minus, and the division. So for this, these two are relatively easy. Uh, it's simple. But these two requires a little bit of attention because it's a little bit tricky here. So I'm going to give an example here. Let A is equals to 10. Corrected to once. All right. And B equals to, let's say, 2.5, corrected to 1 dp. All right, so from the information given here, we will first uh, look for the upper bound and lower bound for A and B. All right, so for A, the error is given 1, all right, because corrected to 1s. So 1 divided by 2, we will get 0 0.5. So if we are to plus minus 0 0.5, then A will be from 9.5 to 10.5. You can just press your calculator and get this. So this will be the lower bound of A and this will be the upper bound of A. All right. So for B, for B, all right, the error is corrected to 1 dp. All right, so let's take note that if it's uh, tens, then it's 0 0.1, then it's 0 0.01, the 0 0.001. All right, for error, we always divide stuff with one. All right, so we don't we don't look according to like 2.5, then we use 0 0.5 divided by 2. No, we don't do that. So if we always divide stuff with one. All right, so it's like if it if they say corrected to tens, then it's uh, 10 divided by 2. If it's correct to the hundreds, it will be 100 divided by 2 and so on. All right, so this is something that you need to know. So for corrected to 1 dp, so the error is 0 0.1 divided by 2. So it's plus minus 0 0.05. All 
all right so this will give the for b to 2.45 and 2.55 so this will be the lower bound of b and this will be the upper bound of b oh my god i'm a little bit sorry here all right upper bound of b all right so after we found all the lower bounds and upper bounds uh let's list out let's list it up here for easy purposes a l b u b is 9.5 and 10.5 okay is it all right and for b l b and u b is 2.45 and 2.55 so now we're going to be going ahead to addition addition plus so if we are to talk about a plus b and we want to find the upper bound and lower bound of this uh, addition it's easy because upper bound will just be equals to the highest plus highest and lower bound will be the lowest plus lowest all right we'll give you the lowest and we'll give you the highest so from here we will simply just get this is 10.5 plus 2.55 we will give you 13.05 and this one uh, for lower bound 9.5 plus 2.45 will just give you 11.95 that easy all right and this goes the same to multiplication a times b all right because if you notice the larger number times larger number will give you a larger number and the smallest number times the smallest number will give this will give you the smallest number so Multiplication works the same as addition, UB times UB, LB times LB, all right? So for this, will be 10.5 multiplied with 2.55, and I will need the calculator for this. Uh, by pressing your calculator, you can get that the answer is 26. Give me a sec. All right, you will get the answer as 26.775 and for lower bound multiply with lower bound 9.5 multiply with 2.45 you will get your answer as times 2.45 you will get the answer as 23.275 all right so this is the upper bound and lower bound for addition and multiplication uh, nothing too hard it's easy so now we're gonna be moving on to subtraction and this is where the tricky part comes in, all right? If we are talking about A minus B, the upper bound and lower bound. All right, if you imagine stuff here, if you minus the largest something with the largest something, it will, it will not give you the largest number, all right? How do I say this, all right? Let's say, uh, all right, I'm gonna just write it down here first. The upper bound will be upper bound, minus lower bound and the lower bound will be lower bound minus upper bound all right how do we explain this one i will i will write down all the examples uh, so that you will know all right for a the upper bound is 10.5 and for b the lower bound is 2.45 all right 10.5 minus 2.45 and this will give you 8.05 Uh, we will look at the we will look at the actual one first then i will give you the comparison later on later onwards all right this is 6.95 all right time to compare if all right if upper bound is equals to upper bound minus upper bound then it will be 10.5 minus 2.55 10.5 will give you 7.95 which if you compare this is smaller than 8.05 so that means this is not the largest value that you can get from a minus b therefore upper bound minus upper bound is a wrong one all right you can only use upper bound minus lower bound it goes the same to lower bound minus lower bound uh, that will be wrong because you won't get the smallest possible value from the subtraction. So this is the part where you need to rem remember 
And now we will go to the division part. The division part, A divide by B, all right? So for upper bound and lower bound, it's the same trickiness where it's actually upper bound divided by lower bound. And this is lower bound divided by upper bound. All right. This is actually very easy. Uh, if, you, if you are to imagine you have 10 apples, will you get more? Uh, will the person, uh, let's say there are a few students there to, to actually divide the 10 apples among themselves. If the number of students is larger, which means the amount of apple everyone gets will be lesser. So obviously, we will want the lesser the student so that we can get more apples per student. All right. So from here, we get that this is 10.5 divided by 2.45. 10.5 minus 2.45. 5 divided by 2.45, you get 4.286, corrected to three decimal places. And the lower bound, 2.45, uh, sorry, lower bound here is 9.5 divided by 2.55. It will give you 3.725, three decimal places. The same thing here, you can actually compare it uh, yourself. If you use upper bound divide by upper bound, you will not get the largest possible division from A divided by B. And it goes the same to lower bound. So this is the, the, the tricky part where you need to remember for subtraction and division where you use upper bound minus lower bound instead and upper bound divide lower bound instead for upper bound of a subtraction and division. All right, I know this might sound a little bit complicated, but now we are going to be looking at a little bit of example here so that you can understand more. All right, so example three. A field is measured to be 34 meters long and 28 meters wide to the nearest meter, all right? The nearest meter here means the error is one meter. So if we divide this by two, it will be 0 0.5 plus minus. Okay, no issue. Calculate the minimum and the maximum values of the area of the field. Area means multiplication, right? So the minimum means lower bound and the maximum means upper bound. So we are when we are looking for the minimum, all right, uh, before that, before that, we first need to look for uh, long will be 34 meters. It, it will go to 33.5 for lower bound and 34.5 for upper bound. All right, it's just plus minus the error here. And for Y, it will be the same, 28 meters. It will go to 27.5 and 28.5. Lower bound, upper bound, plus minus error. All right, so to look for the minimum area, we are using lower bound multiplies by lower bound, which is equals to 33.5 multiplied by 27.5. And from here, we will get 27.5, 921.25 meters square. All right, and for the max here, max of area, we'll be using upper bound, multiply with upper bound. It will be 34.5 multiplied with 28.5, and you will get the final answer as 983.25 meters squared. All right, so no issue. This is a, an easy example. So uh, the next one here, the next one here is a little bit tricky. A motorbike travels a distance of 110 meters to the nearest 10 meters, all right, to the nearest, this is the error. And in a time of five seconds to the nearest second, calculate the maximum and minimum values for the speed, all right? So if we, if you have studied the physics, speed is equal to distance divided by time, all right? 
B is equals to S divided by T. S is actually displacement, but uh, in this context, we are just going to use it. All right. Uh, uh, just use D. All right. Just use D. Okay. So we're going to do it one by one. Uh, for a distance, for a distance, the error is 10 meters. So we divide it by 2, so it's plus minus 5 meters. Okay, so the upper bound, lower bound for the distance will be 105 meters and 115 meters. All right, lower bound, upper bound. Okay, easy. So the second one we'll be doing for seconds. Mm, here for seconds. The error is near a second, which means it's one second divided by two, so it's 0 0.5 second. So here we have five seconds. The time is five seconds, five seconds. So it will be 4.5 seconds and 5.5 seconds. This is lower bound and upper bound. So now we are going to look for the upper bound of the speed. All right. So from here, we see the formula here is division. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. So if you remember from the previous part, division, the upper bound of division, we are going to take the upper bound, divide by lower bound. All right. So in this case, it will be 115 divided by 4.5. Okay, 115 divided by 4.5, which will give you 25.56 meters per second. All right, in two decimal places. Okay, and it goes the same to the lower bound of the speed to be lower bound divided by upper bound, which gives you. 105 divided by 5.5 and here you will get 19.09 meter per second all right two decimal places so this is all uh, about upper bound and lower bounds it's a little bit tricky i remember uh, when i learned about upper bound and lower bound it took me some time because it's a little bit complicated at the error part where you need to divide it by two and to actually uh, find out what you need to divide by 2 is actually all starts with 1, 10, 100, or 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001 divided by 2. All right, according to the question. So, if the question says a motorbike travels a distance of 110 meter to the nearest 5 meters, if it says to the nearest 5 meters, then we use 5 divided by 2, which gives you the to be plus minus 2.5 meters. All right. So yeah, that's all about upper bound and lower bound. I hope this is not a, not too much for you and I hope you will understand. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to DM, uh, DM me through Instagram. Uh, I will try my best to help. And yeah, hope this, hope this video will help you if you don't understand upper bound and lower bound before this. All right, so I will see you guys next time. Stay tuned.